Paris the city of lights, a cultural capital, but also the home to Europe's uh, largest uh, business district. And of course, nestled in all of that dynamic activity, uh, HEC Paris, one of Europe's top ranked schools. Um, and it's always a delight for me at Centre Court to welcome Sarah Vanos. Sarah is the Director of Marketing for the suite of MBA programmes that HEC Paris offers. Sarah, lovely to see you on a day of bright blue skies in Paris. Yes, so nice to see you today, Matt. And it's beautiful to have this weather again in Paris. Yeah, no, it sort of wakes up the city, doesn't it? It's uh, we'll, we'll be taking a look at um, you know, the, the, the programme, that sort of unique, uh, what you describe as the perfect course length, but maybe just a, a context and, you know, HEC Paris within its location, um, the sort of the mission and the values of the school to get us started. Okay, well, for those of you who don't already know the school, it's 140 years old, so we've been delivering business education for a really long time, so really rooted in history and excellence, and um, we have great stories around that, so if we have more time, I can tell you a little bit more about the first cohort and how it's developed over time. It is a business school, standalone business school, so we graduate, uh, you know, masters, MBAs, PhDs, so 4,000 students a year across different programs. Um, I would say that our values are probably diversity, curiosity, and entrepreneurial spirit. And we kind of have these three pillars, which we stand on, which are innovation, purposeful leadership, and inclusive growth. Um, so that's kind of like what we say. I would say all of that brings together, though, in, in diversity, curiosity in our students, and then this strong education. Right. The, the, the school... Uh, you yeah, know, that alumni uh, accumulated over 140 years. It's like a who's who of uh, European business leaders and, and, and in other walks of society and political life. Um, and, you know, there you are at the top of uh, so many uh, business school rankings, the MBA included. Now, unusually, uh, there are many one-year European programs. There are a handful of two-year programs, but uh, there's Goldilocks in the middle uh, with a 16-month program. T -t Talk to me a little bit about that course length and how it fits into the wider MBA curriculum. Yeah, so we, you can start in January or September, which we think gives flexibility. And that 16 months is really also about flexibility for students and allowing them choice and allowing them to do everything, but in a shorter amount of time, which is clearly better for ROI. So you usually have a one-year program or a two-year program. One requires less commitment, one more, um, but you'll often kind of have to make choices of what's included or not. So in 16 months, you can do that internship. You can do a specialization. You can do electives and you get your core courses. You also have careers embedded in the curriculum. So we feel that we've given everything that you would normally get in two years, but shortened it down into 16 months. Um, students really appreciate it. It's really unique. I haven't seen uh, a lot of other business schools that have that. Um, also, the timing of the intake allow internships at different times. So you can do a summer internship, for example, with either intake, but you can also do a longer internship at the end of the program, which can be useful because some of the French companies require those extra months of internship. So we've designed it to kind of hopefully fit everyone's goals in terms of internship specialization electives and just customizing their MBA. And with both the September and January intake, lots of personal pathways. Um, how do you sort of match you know, the core curriculum, the fundamentals that you're looking to uh, to deliver, with that ability to then personalize the program, both through uh, you know different core projects and uh, electives that you can choose. Yeah, so it's split into two basically 18 month blocks. So your eight month blocks. So your first eight months on campus, you're doing your core courses. So it can be ethics and sustainability, leadership, corporate finance, marketing, et cetera. So you really get the basics. If you're great at something already, you share it with your classmates. If you need to improve upon something and understand business as a whole, that's really your moment. So you have that eight months. During that eight months, you do have languages that are optional. So you can choose different languages and you also have careers going on, which you kind of pick and choose your career path. Then following that eight months, you have like a small break where you can do an internship and then you dive into the eight months, which are completely personalized to you. So you decide, do I want to go on exchange? Do I want to do electives? Do I want to do electives and specialization? Do I want to do a project? Do I want to do an entrepreneurial project, which means you can actually start your own company, um, you know, while you're in courses. So, so many choices um, and kind of split like that. So you've got that eight months. And then during that first eight months, it's also great because you can think about what do I 
I want to do next, you can see which courses you love. You might come in and your idea of what you want to do, what you want to study. Um, it could change a lot based on your classmates, your experiences. So you have that time to really live the core and then decide the custom based on what you have done in the core courses. You've seen you know, a huge demand for the program uh, and, and we're commenting that a, a recent round was one of the busiest ever. So <laughs> getting that behind you. Um, what do you think uh, applicants are identifying in the program? I and mean, of course, the, the course length, but what really are the, those sort of distinct aspects of HEC Paris that differentiate it in the market? Yeah, so I think, first of all, the location, we're so close to Paris. So it's 17 kilometers in a car. It's about, you know, under 30 minutes. Uh, I commute from the center and it takes usually just under an hour if you take public transport. So you're able to be in the city, enjoying Paris, going to museums, but you also are, you know, close to companies that are hiring the biggest business district. And then you're just in this private wooded campus with its own chateau, um, so historical. And we have on-campus housing. So a lot of students will think about this location of Paris, which is amazing, but then they don't really have to worry, how do I find an apartment? Where do I live? How do I get to classes? So those are two of the unique things. Um, I think also the class size. So we have a smaller class size than a lot of MBAs. So 300 students split over two intakes, on average 300, sometimes a slightly more, a slightly less. Um, and all of our students take classes together regardless of intake. So we feel that it's a good amount to get to know each other. When you look around, you're not just in a sea of people. So that's important to us. Um, yeah, and then I would say maybe our alumni community stands out. So we have a very involved community involved from interviews, but also events all over the world. So they host events in over 100 countries, um, really available when you reach out to them and really just still so, um, I would say, like incorporated into the DNA of the school and the decisions we make. Right. You talk about that intimate learning environment that you know, I'm sure it creates those you know, strong bonds and, and the loyalty to the school had to open another section to respond to uh, such strong uh, international demand. So how do you then uh, put together that class diversity, you know, to, to ensure the sort of group work, not necessarily with your best friends, I mean, that, that you will make lifelong friends coming through the program, but people that will challenge you and that are really going to help you in your personal development? So I think it's helpful that we have a round each month because we don't have, you know, tons and tons of applicants all the time. So we can kind of shape the class on a month to month basis based on who confirms that they're joining. Uh, we look really closely, of course, at the country that they're living in or their nationality, but we also look at their professional background because that's just as important to us, the professional diversity. And often our students will say it's not just about diversity in terms of, you know, this person lives in this country prior. It's also in terms of what are they doing day to day um, in their career before? What have they experienced? What can they bring? And then, of course, we make the groups, which we try to have different professions and nationalities in the group, which, as you say, it's not always your best friend. Sometimes it creates conflict. Conflict, but really helps simulate like a real world situation where you have different perspectives, different points of view, and you have to be really open to other ideas and come up with an idea collectively. Right. We, we talked about having so many Fortune 500 companies on your doorstep. There are opportunities in consulting, banking. Um, but at the same time, you'd also emphasize that entrepreneurial mindset. H how is that woven into the program and the opportunities then to incubate your business idea and take it to the next level? So there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. So we have a specialization dedicated to um, entrepreneurship. So it's four months. When you go in the specialization, you can want to be an entrepreneur or entrepreneur. So you might want to work in a big company and be able to bring and have innovation, motivation, et cetera. So what happens is we're located in one of the biggest kind of places where tech is developed. Uh, we have all kinds of etc just around research and development um, we invite different people in who have come up with like a business technology so maybe they've invented a new chip that does x or y and during the specialization you learn of course like you know how to evaluate a company um venture capitalists come in and talk to you etc business like law how to launch a company but you also take this idea with a real person who's invented a new technology and you turn it into a business so you're put into a group of four people and all semester you are uh, working on this to actually turn translate that idea into a business sense. Um, sometimes it turns into a company after and we have, have had students who go on and work with this. So if I give an example, there was, it was like a chip 
it's kind of hard to explain really small, but the students found a way to um, measure the load of trucks when they drive over it. So they were able to make like a movable scale, which for places with public roads, this was a way to capture and move and, you know, give tickets, et cetera. So places like China and Canada, they, after they pitched it to different countries and we have a student who joined the company and she's there today, um, which is pretty interesting. So that's kind of one path. And then the other path is you can do an entrepreneurial project if you'd like, where you pitch your idea to professors, you can take a partner from the class, and then there's different steps to accommodate you. You have kind of a tutor or mentor throughout, and then there's specific um, tangible kind of milestones that you follow. We also have an entrepreneurship center. We have a partnership with a large incubator, our own incubator. So lots of different things kind of along the way for those who would like to start a company. We'd started by talking about a course length of 60 months that actually then <laughs> gives you the time to do everything, but I'm sure that there are so many more possibilities and options to, to, to be able to fit in everything. How do you then accompany uh, the incoming class in, in making their choices, finding that sort of, whether it's a career path, you know, exploring a particular passion and interest and, and you know, providing the guidance and support for them? Yeah, so the nice thing is that a lot of people come in with kind of like preconceived notions, like I'm going to do this, then this, then this. And I think that that can work sometimes, but I think it's almost, I when I worked in careers and I was coaching students, sometimes it's a shame because they are so focused that they might miss out on a great opportunity in maybe a different country than they imagined or a different sector. So we try to help them get to know themselves from day one by embedding careers in the curriculum. So they come in and they do leadership assessments. So different types of tests to learn their strengths, their weaknesses, um, how they deal with conflict, how they deal with management, et cetera. So that's kind of as a whole. And then you discuss that in different um courses, et cetera, um, workshops. So like I said, it's embedded uh, for credit in the curriculum. So we, we actually force you to think about these things where often careers is optional. And I think this is a differentiator that's important because even if you're just kind of like, I know what I want to do, I have everything, there might be skills, tools, uh, sectors that you don't know about. So we have this going on from actually week number one, they have a, a series of workshops. Um, Outside of that, I think the fact that it's 16 months and the fact that your choices come eight months in mean, means that you can like really experience and live the program for the first three or four months. So talking to second year students, maybe asking them what they took, what they enjoyed, uh, learning from others. So pretend I'm coming from tech and I want to go into consulting. I talk to some people that are in consulting. You know, those people might want to go into banking. So you have that like sounding board and resources. Like, what is it really like to be a consultant at McKinsey? Is this something that fits my skills? Um, yeah, so I would say in general, you have that and then to kind of allow students more choice and to allow them as many options as possible. When it comes time to choose, let's say the specializations, we have kind of like a specializations fair almost. So you get to learn about each one in depth, typically from the professor coordinating the specialization. So what courses are in there? How can you complement it? What will you learn? What, what are the kind of outcomes? Um, what are projects in the past? What are you doing? So each one kind of explains like, I don't know, in the marketing one, last term, we had a company uh, who gave like, you know, can you do our digital transformation? So then students went in groups and they work on this problem and then they were able to pitch it to senior executives at the company. And then sometimes that can turn into a job offer. Um, so yeah, so I think that we have moments and support throughout, whether it be careers or academic to help you make your decisions. Similarly, if you're like, should I go on exchange or should I stay in Paris? We might say, uh, when, where do you want to work after? When do you want to be recruited? How are you choosing your exchange partner? So we have a lot of staff, I think, dedicated um, to the students and they, they love them. Most of the people, they just love speaking to students. So you have a, a lot of resources and good moments and thing done quickly. I know how um, dedicated um, Tony Summers and the careers team are. To, you're holding up that mirror, exploring those uh, different options. As, you know, we're only going to do this MBA once, so what a, what a wonderful opportunity it is to then explore. If, if I was to sit down with you and Benoit and your colleagues for one of those monthly rounds of admissions uh, and you know, applicants that you then invited into the programme, what they'd shared as their uh, next goals, and then I talked to them as they graduate and this incredible exploration and journey uh, that they've been on. What, what do you think would be the overriding sort of feedback about this transformational experience and you know the lasting impression on them? 
Well, I think maybe they would say that they grew a lot more than they thought in an unexpected ways. So I think you're, even if you're very comfortable with like the uncomfortable, you're constantly pushed outside of your comfort zone. You have conversations that are so interesting that you would never have thought that you would have. And they're so inspiring. I think, you know, typically they say my classmates are inspiring. I can't imagine having created such a bond because everyone says it. And usually at this point, you know, an average age of 30, you have friends from university, you have friends outside, but you can't even imagine the depth of the bonds that are created and how valuable they are in your personal and professional life later. So it can be anything from, you know, a I mean, there's ongoing conversations, there's reunions, there's WhatsApp where people discuss their business challenges, where they can use others as a sounding board, um, or even recommending others for positions. So I know that more than 10% of the class each year gets their next job based on a classmate. And I've seen the interview prep where you have two students going for the same role, but they're working together to prep each other. And that collegial non-competitive behavior, it's not consistent across every business school. So I think these things would stand out if we're talking about kind of people. If we're talking about experiences, definitely our outdoor leadership seminar. It's something that every alum is like, I want to do it again. I love it. It was such a great moment. And then MBAC, which is like the Olympics of the NBA, which we host on our campus. Yeah, let's hope for these sort of blue skies when uh, when the NBA tournament uh, arrives on the campus. And how many, but 18, 20 of uh, the European business schools that all descend on uh, HEC for a very long weekend? Yep, typically around, like you said, uh, 20 schools, usually around 1,800 students. Um, sometimes we have schools coming from, we had a school, I think we had some schools from the U.S. I think once Stanford or Harvard even came for the soccer. We've had schools from China come as well. So it can be international depending on what's allowed at the time. Um, and then, yeah, one long weekend, which includes every sport you can imagine. So hands-on sports, but it can also be gaming sports or other. There's also like a battle of the bands. And really, it's completely 100% organized, taking care of budgeted sponsorships, et cetera, by your students. So that's embedded into their uh, curriculum as well. So they have to volunteer. We have a core leadership team, uh, a large budget that they manage and deal with. And it's probably, you know, one of the greatest networking experiences because you don't just network with people from your own school. You get this vast business school network. So it's, uh, it's usually like something that people remember forever. I tried to capture a taste of that in a Bloomberg article that I called Can Harvard Business School Bend It Like Beckham? And this extraordinary uh, transformation of the campus. Uh, they, they did. They walked away with a soccer trophy, but um, no more than that. Um, so there you are celebrating 140 years um, and looking really good. Um, what, what will the school look like at 145 or 150? How, how do you think the MBA program will continue to adapt and evolve? Yeah, so what I like about our program is it's not stagnant. So I would say every year we add something. So I was just before this trying to look at what courses we had had recently. And I looked, there's like AI and management or um, creating value through emotions or inspiring diverse teams. And I think most recently purposeful leadership. So really thinking about what are the leaders of tomorrow going to look like? How can we adapt our curriculum to match? Whether that be a new specialization, a new core course like purposeful leadership, um, or other. So constantly trying to look and read the market, talk to recruiters, talk to students, look at the goals of our students, and then try to adapt our curriculum to match. So keeping the fundamentals, but adapting um, consistently. So uh, again, like AI in our courses across different facets and other. Um, we think that the MBA will continue to be just as important or more important because of the fact that, you know, everything is so different today. There's so many unexpected challenges. If you've been going along in your job, you might not really know how to react. Um, different values, different people coming into the market who expect different things. So even, you know, management is a part of the MBA uh, courses. So thinking about all of this, I think is really important. Um, We've embedded more ESG and CSR into each class. So we have, of course, standalone courses like ethics and sustainability, but we also have uh, almost every course has hours of ESG and CSR embedded into them. So speaking with our professors to think about how to, you know, ensure that our leaders are leading with purpose, with impact, but also thinking about the planet. Um, 
And then if we look at predictions, so I think Andrea made predictions recently with poets and quants, and he said in this digital world that we're all kind of living today, the in-person per in MBA might become more important than ever. So for the moment, we have no plans to be a hybrid MBA. We have no plans to do an online MBA full-time. Uh, we just really want to concentrate on delivering that in-person experience and making sure we bring people together. And then perhaps entrepreneurial projects on the rise with all the opportunities out there. So again, trying to put like a good framework and also opportunities and also, you know, ways of guiding students and helping them to launch these projects in such like a, a hot market, I guess. Right. It, it, it's wonderful to know that the school doesn't sit back on impressive laurels and it, it itself remain very curious uh, and, and you know, looking for new ways to, to respond with the sort of uh, uh, digitally minded leadership and flexibility that clearly the world needs. Well, Sarah, it, it's always lovely to welcome you to Centre Court. Thank you for providing that, that greater level of depth of the programme. Of course, we uh, invite our viewers to uh, engage with Sarah and the rest of the team, find out more and perhaps uh, come and visit them on that beautiful campus. It was uh, lovely to have you with us. Thank you so much.